One of the phrases we use a lot in the context of modern human origins is anatomically modern or anatomically modern homo sapiens, referring to those that are closer to us living humans today. Now, this term in many ways is a misnomer. When we use that phrase, anatomically modern, in the context of the fossil record, we're usually using it to imply a distinction between those specimens which are going in the direction of modern humans and those that are some side branch, some evolutionary dead end that aren't moving in the direction of modern humans. But this is a challenge in and of itself. If we tried to come up with a strict anatomical definition of anatomical modernity that encapsulated all living humans and the variation that we present, and also all those fossils that we think are on that lineage leading to humans, but that exclude those side branches, the task would be impossible. There's a retention of some archaic or primitive characteristics in living humans today. Indeed, you might know a few members of family or friends that you think are archaic in certain kinds of ways. And there's also individuals who simply don't have all the traits that we think of or associate with modern anatomy. There's variation, in other words. Then again, variation is the natural condition. It's not surprising. But that term is used as a way of trying to distinguish between these fundamentally different evolutionary scenarios. An evolution leading towards us, and an evolution that doesn't lead towards us, that leads to some kind of dead end. When we look at it in the fossil record, as it turns out, those specimens that are early anatomically modern Homo sapiens, such as this specimen here from the site of Herto in Ethiopia, they don't actually look all that much like true anatomically modern Homo sapiens as represented by individuals actually living today. There's a lot of features that seem primitive or archaic on this specimen. Instead, what it's suggesting is that this specimen is moving uniquely in the direction that modern humans have evolved over the last 160,000 years in the case of Herto. That's true with other specimens that we attribute to anatomical modernity as well. That definition of what constitutes anatomical modernity changes through times as individuals get closer to the present. In other words, we're still evolving. Likewise, some of the features that we might associate with modernity are found on fossils such as this Neanderthal that we don't consider anatomically modern, that we describe as archaic in some ways. So it's important to recognize that that anatomical modernity is really a composite definition. It represents a gestalt of characters rather than specific characters. And in reality, that definition comes together and changes throughout evolutionary time. The features that appear modern 150,000 years ago are different than the features that appear modern 10,000 years ago. So when you hear that phrase, anatomical modernity, be aware that it's not a strict definition. It's a dynamic term referring to a combination of different features over time, that change over time. So keep that in mind as we begin moving further into our understanding of modern human origins.